would like to apologise in advance for this very seedy episode. Well, I've been to a garden centre this week in Hereford, doing quite a bit of shopping. So let's see what I'm hoping to grow in my garden this year. So I'll start off with the flowers for this year. I've got a couple of varieties of lobelia of different colours to go in the borders. I've got some slightly taller stocks and some night flocks for some fragrance. I've got some cineraria to fill in the gaps. I've still got some Allison left over from last year. I'm going to try and grow those. I've got some salvias because I really like the colour and the height of those. And I've also got this free packet of giant poppies. Cool! Now the slightly nerdy amongst you might be wondering why I've chosen these particular varieties. Well, the answer is really quite simple. I liked the picture on the front and the price on the back. And it's as simple as that. Call me a pathetic consumer if you like, but that's the way I choose things. In terms of the veggies, I've still got some leek seeds left over from last year, so I'll grow some more leeks. I like leeks. I'm going to grow one more row of parsnips. Beetroot is on the agenda again, but hopefully I'll have more success this year. Spinach, because I do look quite like spinach. I've never grown it in the garden. I've still got some cauliflower seeds from my earwig devastated supply from last year. I'm going to grow some corn and I'm going to get the seeds in early. I've also got some San Marzano tomato seeds from last year, as well as this free packet of seeds from a variety called Harbinger. Sounds ominous. I've also decided that instead of growing onions this year, I'm going to have a go at growing garlic. I do like garlic. I've also got a couple of chilies, which are jingling with seeds, and I'm going to plant those. And I kept six butternut squash seeds from some butternut squash I had last year. I'll see if I can grow those too. So there'll be a few new things in the garden this year, like the spinach and the cauliflower. I don't really count last year's because they all got eaten by the earwigs. And the garlic. I've not grown garlic before, so I'm quite looking forward to that. I've also got something really interesting. Dark black climbing beans. They taste like ordinary sort of climbing beans, but the advantage of these is that you can see them when they're on the plant. Often when you're picking beans off a plant, it's really difficult to find them. And when you do find them, they've already grown too big. I was alerted to this by my friend Jan, and I'm really looking forward to seeing these grow. I've also got myself a nice big bag of multi-purpose compost. So let the sewing fest begin. So the first thing to do is to separate them into a sow later group. These and these will go directly into the soil sometime around the end of March. These I'll pot up in April time. And these can go directly into the soil a bit later on when I've sorted the beds out. And then I've got a big pile of sow now. That's a lot of sowing. I think I'm going to be here some time. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually just to sieve some compost because when I've sown the seeds on the compost I want some nice fine stuff to sprinkle on the top. There we are, I've got some nice fine stuff for putting on the top of the seeds. So the next thing I've done is filled all my seed trays with compost and decided which seeds I'm going to plant in which container. Those of you who watch my cooking programmes will know how OCD I am about getting things ready before I start. So I'll start with these lobelia, and the first thing I'm going to do is moisten the compost. Do 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 little February showers. Dee, 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 dee. Carefully cut the packet open. I don't know whether you saw any of the Winter Olympics. I did, really quite enjoyed it. But one thing really amuses me, and that's the medals table. It's the same in the Summer Olympics. In the US, they categorise the countries in the medals table according to the total number of medals that each country gets, regardless of whether they're gold, silver or bronze. The rest of the world, however, categorises countries by, first of all, the number of golds they've got, secondly, the number of silvers, and thirdly, the number of bronze. It's kind of like, you know, three points for a gold, two for a silver, one for a bronze. So the rest of the world says 
No, America, you didn't finish second. You finished fourth behind Norway and Canada. Hooray for the Canadians, I say. But it got me thinking about things like fact and interpretation. I mean, the fact is that America got a certain number of medals. But it's also the fact that they didn't get as many goals as three other countries. What's different is the interpretation of those facts. In fact, all of history is about facts and their interpretation. I mean, a classic example is last week. I said some stuff. Some people interpreted it one way based on their own circumstances or attitudes or belief sets or whatever. Other people interpreted it differently. You see, sometimes it's not necessarily what you say or the way you say it. It's how other people choose to interpret it. And I can't be held responsible for that. Anyway, the plain facts are that I'm planting lobelia. The questions which remain are why lobelia? Why in this tray? And why is she planting them in this order? Well, that, my friends, is for you to decide. There yeah, then, these cineraria are much bigger seeds. I can actually see where I'm sprinkling them. And they do need to be covered with a fine layer of compost. So it says... Do, 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 do. Alrighty, we're done. Well, that's all my flower seeds. Just need to take some of them indoors and cover some of them with plastic bags. Ooh. Things are going quite well. Hang on a minute. Yeah, things are going quite well. So now it's time to deal with my veggies. The six butternut squash seeds will go into these pots. The leeks will go in here, the parsnips in here, the cauliflower in here, sweet corn in individual pots. And then I'm going to put in this propagator, some chilies and the two types of tomato. So we'll start by giving everything a good sprinkle, get the compost nice and moist. Then in go the butternut squash seeds. I'll just make little holes with a pencil. Pop a seed into each hole. And cover them up. It's just started raining again. You can probably hear it on the roof. Then there's the leeks. Cover them over. These can stay in the greenhouse. It doesn't matter if there's a frost, these will survive it. No problem. Then there's the parsnips. Cover those over too. And the cauliflower. Then I'll plant the sweet corn. One into each little doodad. I've got a few seeds left over, so I might as well double up just in case the germination rate of these isn't quite so good. Now I'll plant the chilies down the end here. I'm going to put two or three seeds in each podule. I'll just poke them down with my pencil. Now I'll plant my San Marzano tomatoes in here and the harbingers in here. Just one seed per podule. Sorted. Now these I'm going to take inside and put on my study windowsill because they'll need warmth for propagation but the rest they can stay in here. So there's just my garlic and I'm going to plant that outside but the first thing I need to do is break it up into individual cloves. Well according to my math skills there's 37 here, bit of a funny number. It's a prime number two. I need to plant them outside, so that's where I'm going next. I'm going to plant them at this end of my raised bed. And if you remember, I dug it over last week. So I'm just raking it over a bit. Make sure the soil's nicely broken up. Now they need to be four inches apart, these cloves. So I'm just going to put them into place to start with. Right, now I know where they're going can push them in and they need to go in with the wide bit at the bottom. I'll just push them into about an inch deep. There we go. 
by laying them out like this before you push them in you don't really have to worry about if you can remember where you, the last one went in which happened the first time I sewed onions I was pushing them in and then I got distracted and I couldn't remember where the last one I put in was and that's the last now the terrorist has got used to using that as his poop box so I need to put my defences up again it doesn't seem all that long ago that I was taking these down poor little kitty's going to be all discombobulated when he sees the defences back up again there we are all nice and snug now there's one last little job I want to do before I finish for the day take out the dead blueberry bush and replace it with the one I bought yesterday now then this thing will offer no resistance whatsoever there you go told you make the hole the right size for my new plant uh, certainly not going to lack for moisture in this hole that's for sure go on baby would you come and pop him in the hole super lovely smashing great this is a variety called blue crop which is a different variety to the the one just over there which is a variety called blue etta i had quite a good crop off it last year let's hope for the same this year sorted showers coming on back to the greenhouse well we've just had a bit of a shower there now before i go let's look back at what was happening in my garden this time week 9 2012 and 2013 <music> Take this border for example, as you can see the edges are a bit scraggy really and I need to tidy them up. So I've bought a load of these interlocking edging strips which hopefully should keep the edges neat and tidy. I'm back in the greenhouse again and the mild weather has prompted me to take the risk and plant some courgette plants. I bought some seeds, I bought some alisum seeds because I really love the, the fragrance of alisum and I bought some tomato seeds. I've decided based on last year's performance to go for some San Marzano again. Now one of the issues I have is that my greenhouse isn't heated which can be a bit of a problem when it comes to germinating seeds. But I picked up this. It's a windowsill greenhouse and it means I can sow my seeds and keep them nice and warm in the house while they're germinating. Well, that's what I've got time for this week. It kind of feels like the year's moving now. I've planted all those seeds and got things in the garden and yeah thanks for watching and do join me next time in Titley's busy garden mm -hmm.